I mean, I find change interesting. I don't know. So what I do just, you think I, you so, would be doing if you were 19? I don't though? know. I mean, I think in a way, I'm, I'd probably say I'm non-binary, I think, probably. But and I mean, what about your like, sexuality? Well, you, you, you're, you always, let's get you to always that. lean into the, you know, being Britain's most famous bi-curious comedian or something. Was that, is that a real reflection of your adolescence? Did you fall around yeah. with guys? Yeah, I'd say so. But again, it just almost seems odd because it was, feels like a sort of, like these kind of things were like, a, it's like a big deal to talk about it. This is like, I don't really I mean, understand it why it's such people, a big deal. But then deal. it's not if it's not, isn't it? Breaking right now, Axed Britain's Got Talent judge and Little Britain creator David Williams has suggested, I think ludicrously, that he might be non-binary after he faced a difficult question about his portrayal of trans characters in the past. This is from a brand new interview in Australia. Watch this. Any flack for that? Because in the 2020s, the idea of, I suppose, ridiculing a trans person because well, they don't I don't think we were ridiculing. I always think female. characters are like celebrating. I felt all our characters were sort of winners and they were sort of, we were celebrating eccentricity. And they're funny, so you want to spend time with these characters. Right. And what have you made of the kind of move towards, uh, I guess, a more dogmatic interpretation of identity politics in the past? 10 years. Well, I think it's interesting. I mean, I find change interesting. I don't know. So what I do just, you think I, so you would be doing if you were 19? I don't though? know. I mean, I think in a way, I'm, I'd probably say I'm non-binary, I think, probably. But and I mean, what about your like, sexuality? Well, you, you, you're, you always, let's get you to always lean into the, you know, being <laughs> Britain's most famous bi-curious comedian or something. Was that, is that a real reflection of your adolescence? Did you fall around yeah. with guys? Yeah, I'd say so. But again, it just almost seems odd because it was, feels like a sort of like these kind of things were like a, it's like a big deal to talk about it. This is like I don't really I mean, understand it is for why some it's such people, a big but deal. But then it's not if it's not, isn't it? Sometimes I think my life would be a lot simpler if, if I was just gay. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> seems okay. I'm really drawn to gay thing. Yeah, really like gay culture. I'm so sick of this. I am so sick of this. Now I am a gay man. You won't hear me talk about it all the time because it is a tiny part of my personality. But I am sick of people bastardizing what it means to be a gay man and then start saying that actually, oh, I'm probably non-binary. No, just say you're gay if you're gay, David Ramos, or say you fooled around with some guys. No one cares. But stop trying to erase gender from society. You are a man. You've already been, you've always been a man. Maybe you're a bit of a camp man. Maybe you dress up. That's fine. Maybe you've slept with guys. I don't care. But to claim that you're non-binary, to seemingly try and deflect from criticism that you used to play trans characters has really annoyed me. Let me bring in Lee Cohen now, who is joining me stateside, of course, a columnist for The Sun, The Spectator, The Daily Telegraph, and many other platforms. And Lee, can you understand my annoyance of this? I actually have never had a problem with David Williams, but this to me feels like a Sam Smith moment. It feels like a moment where he is trying to put his career first by claiming that he's non-binary. We saw this with Demi Lovato too. And it infuriates me because it's erasing women from society. Well, Dan, to me, it's it's a bit tragic because here we have yet another, uh, well, he's not a Hollywood personality being uh, a Brit, but here we have another, you know, globally famous celebrity uh, who's trying to, curry favor and virtue signal and, uh, you know, taking away a lot of what I appreciate about him. I think this guy is tremendous. I found him, you know, hilariously funny. Uh, I've adored him. I've adored Little Britain. And this just gets in the way and sends a lot of interference. I totally agree. I totally agree because it's like he is so worried about the woke mob coming for him over the previous Little Britain sketches 
that he feels that the way to deflect from that is say, oh, well, I must be non-binary. Because then, Lee, the thing is, if you're non-binary, then you're not a man or a woman and no one can attack you for being either of those things. Do you see what I mean? I feel like it's strategic and it's cynical, but you have to think about the consequences of these decisions. Because when Sam Smith went down this path and started saying, oh, well, I can't enter any categories at the Brit Awards because I'm not a man or a woman, the Brit Awards got rid of the female category. So... Firstly, I find it offensive as a gay man, but secondly, I find it offensive as someone that cares about women's rights. Well, um, I couldn't agree with you more. And But it, it also seems, Dan, on, on our side of the pond, uh, I'm sure it will be news to no one that we've just had an historic election uh, with Donald Trump's election, where uh, Hollywood, for all of its virtue signaling and for all of its piling on into these kinds of discussions, uh, you know, has been totally repudiated. Uh, they, they spent millions of dollars, billions of dollars trying to elect Kamala Harris with all kinds of celebrity uh, virtue signaling, ver all kinds of celebrity uh, homage to. Uh, Kamala Harris. And it went nowhere because, you know what, this doesn't hold sway with the American people the way it used to. So I wonder if David is a bit out of touch in all of this. Well, exactly. Exactly. I mean, look, part of me feels sorry for him because everyone has been after this guy, Lee, for such a long time. He was sacked effectively from Britain's Got Talent after a completely unfair stitch up by the Guardian newspaper that was leaked a secret recording of him speaking privately to his fellow judges, Simon Cowell, Amanda mm. Holden, and Alicia Dixon. Mm. And he was quite sexual in the things that he was saying. But Lee, I stood up for David Williams over that because he was talking about a, a, a woman sexually, which again makes me think, mm, are you really non-binary? Are you really gay? But anyway, that's another story. But I thought this is a private conversation. He was having a private conversation, yes, in a workplace setting, but it's a bit like going to the staff room and you're chatting with your mates. That's very different than if you're out on the counter at McDonald's serving staff members and having those conversations. So I feel like he's been subjected to a witch hunt by the woke mob who want to bring him down because they want to destroy lots of people. You saw what they did to me last year. So I stood up for him over this, but I feel like, using the whole non-binary thing as some sort of deflection is really wrong. As you say, why not just say, no, 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 I was having a laugh playing a female character all of these years ago. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The world is changing. Okay, so maybe my comedy has changed, but don't try and cancel me for something that took place over a decade ago. Mm, mm, mm. I know uh, you're you're precisely right, Dan. And you know you're a man of principle, so you know you you stood up for him at the time, and that was the right thing to do. And unfortunately, he's let you down on an, on another principle. Yeah, you're completely right. You're completely right because the thing is, is that I I feel I, I, look. I worry these days that people sometimes use sexuality to make political points and that shouldn't be the case your sexuality is yours and that's completely fine but don't use it to make a political point no i i think that's precisely right and we live in these times where you know it it, it was a better time when no one discussed what went on in their bedroom because no one should care it shouldn't affect uh, anything that you do professionally or otherwise. And, you know, now it's so fashionable to, to once again, to jump on the bandwagon of virtue signaling to be something that's, you know, not sort of standard. And, um, you know, of course, there was a time in Hollywood where it was damaging to be gay. And that's not certainly not the case anymore. We've gone the other way. The pendulum has swung well to the other direction. Indeed. Now, look, I just want to take you through this Guardian revelation, Lee, at the time about David Williams, because I think it is worth just reminding people about these so-called derogatory and sexually explicit remarks that were recorded by The Guardian and then eventually got David Williams fired. So he was uh, 
recorded, and by the way, he's spoken about the fact that this had a huge impact on his mental health. He then sued the production company involved and they ended up coming to a settlement. But fundamentally, he lost his big TV gig on British TV. Now, this Guardian revelation claimed that he was recorded referring to one contestant as the C word and saying of another, she thinks you want to F her, but you don't. These remarks were made during a recorded audition at the London Palladium in January 2020. But if you want to look sharp for all those festive gatherings and maybe finally win that best groomed at the Family Dinner Award, check out the latest masterpiece from Manscaped, the Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver. Now, trust me, I used it yesterday. It's like Rudolph for your face, guiding you to a smooth, irritation-free shave. So let's dive into the goods so I can show you. The Chairman Pro is armed with not one, but two interchangeable skin-safe blade heads. Think of them as your grooming superheroes. The skin-safe four-blade foil for when you want that baby's bottom smooth, and the skin-safe stubble trimmer for when you want to keep some stubble, but clean it up a bit. That was like me yesterday. Uh, both keep you looking sharp while minimizing razor burn and irritation because nobody wants to show up to the holiday party, right? Looking like they've lost a fight with the Christmas tree. But wait, there's more. The Chairman Pro has flex adjust technology, which is basically like the holiday miracle of shaving. It's like Santa's elves made it for you. The blades and pivoting head adjust to every curve of your face and it's gentle on the neck area as if they had the gift of foresight. So go ahead, kiss that awkward jawline patch goodbye. No more pretending it doesn't exist while you hope nobody notices under the mistletoe. And if you want even more precision, on the right side of the bracket, there's a precision lock. When you lock it, the blade head sits firm so you can achieve a more precise shave. And here's something that's going to make your grooming routine even easier. The Chairman Pro is waterproof. So yep, you can use it right in the shower. And the waterproof feature doesn't just make shaving easier, it also simplifies cleanup too. Just a quick rinse under the sink and you're all set. The Chairman Pro isn't just for daily shaves either, it's powerful enough to tackle up to five day growth, making it perfect whether you're shaving every day or just tidying up after a few days. And with up to 75 minutes of runtime, a single charge, You'll have plenty of juice to go from Santa's beard to smooth as a snow angel. There's a travel lock too and an LED spotlight. I find this really helpful actually because it allows you to see every detail, ensuring nothing gets missed. So get the Chairman Pro today and experience a shave that is as smooth as you deserve. It has everything you need to keep your face looking and feeling the best all in one box. And here's the exciting part. There's a bank holiday special on. So head over to manscaped.com and join the over 11 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by using the code OUTSPOKEN for free shipping and 25% off this week to mark Black Friday. Exciting times. That's manscaped.com using the coupon code OUTSPOKEN. But it was effectively banter. It was effectively banter that was banter that was picked up by the microphones. Mm. He, he added to Simon Cowell, I know she's like, oh, F off. I was saying she thinks you want to F her, but you don't. It's the last thing on your mind. But she's like, yep, I bet you do. No, I don't. I had a bit of a rude word, but now it's going. It's now shriveled up inside my body. A private conversation. Once it went public, he released a statement saying, I would like to apologize to the people I made disrespectful comments about during breaks in filming for Britain's Got Talent in 2020. These were private conversations, and like most conversation with friends, were never intended to be shared. Nevertheless, I am sorry. What is, I think, pretty unforgivable, though, is that Simon Cowell then quickly turned on David Williams, because this is what happens in the celebrity world, and a spokesman for Cowell said, we were unaware of the alleged conversation until contacted by The Guardian. Whilst it is not suggested Simon heard the alleged remarks, we can confirm he did not. Britain's Got Talent is a family show and we do not condone the use of any such language. Now, I love Simon Cowell. I used to spend so much time, Lee Cohen, you might not know this about my past, but I used to spend so much time backstage with Simon Cowell during the filming of The X Factor, both here in the UK and in the US and Britain's Got Talent and America's Got Talent. Now, I'm sorry if any of those conversations in Simon Cowell's dressing room had been broadcast to the wider world, then that could have also resulted in his cancellation. So I was disappointed with Simon about that. David Williams apologised for it. 
But you know what this is striking me as, Lee? This is striking me as Donald Trump, Billy Bush, private conversation that happened to be caught on camera, broadcast to the world in an attempt to nullify his political career. Don't we have to stand up against these sorts of leaks, Lee? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, we do. And, and this is so unethical from a journalistic standpoint, from a you know, public dialogue standpoint. But 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 sadly, Dan, we live in the we live in the Wild West now. And um, so, you know, anyone will do anything to get clicks. And, and um, I, I think uh, that's that that was part of that. Although I wonder what the revelation you just made to me, Dan, I was spending so much time backstage when we're going to see you on Strictly Come Dance. <laughs> do you know, do, do you know, in all seriousness, uh, a few years ago, before my mainstream media cancellation, the booker for Strictly Come Dancing actually approached me. And I said, not in a trillion years. That's just not my bag. I've never wanted to do that type of thing. They always used to try and get me as well, Lee, in the Celebrity Big Brother house. And don't get me wrong, I love Big Brother. I love that show. I loved watching it. I used to appear on the panel show. But no, I would never want to do that. That's not what I do. I think when you do that, you open your life up to all of these sorts of things. And David Williams is a guy who I got to know a little bit over the years. He initially, I mean, this is really interesting because I'd never met him, but initially he would force me to go and do interviews at Britain's Got Talent and he wouldn't turn up. So I'd have to do them just with Simon Cowell, Alicia Dixon and Amanda Holden, who were the judges. Now, he ended up warming to me and he ended up coming on the show that I used to work on. And we had a fine relationship and I once bumped into him walking around London with his kids and... Well, 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 his son, sorry, and, and his friend. And he was a nice guy, quite a conflicted guy, I think, in a lot of ways. Someone who really hadn't coped well with fame. And for a long time, there had been lots of rumours about his personal sex life and all of that type of thing. I don't give a damn about any of that. And so this really isn't me making some sort of personal attack, Lee, on David Williams. I don't want to do that. It's not about that. But it is about saying, be careful. Be yeah. careful when you start saying things like you are non-binary. Because what yeah. that does is open up a whole load of hell for women in the entertainment industry who have always been underrepresented, for women in the sporting world. I mean, Lee, I'm going to be honest with you about it. I don't believe non-binary exists because you are either <laughs> a man or a woman. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now, I, I, I feel the same way, just just in the way that I feel that, you know, bisexual is is that kind of label, too. And there's probably some kind of continuum. But I think it's easier for a lot of men, particularly to say that they're bisexual, because it, it doesn't sound quite so definitive. Yeah, exactly. as I'm getting. Well, do, you, do, you, do you know something they used to say, Lee, probably you get cancelled for saying this, but they used to say by now, gay later. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the difference for me about the non-binary thing is you can't say that you're not something. You can't say that you're not something because what you try and do is you take things away from other people. And a lot of this is attention seeking too. I think with Williams, this is about deflection, but with a lot of people, it's about attention seeking. Demi Lovato for a while went through this whole phase of, oh, I'm non-binary, you have to call me they, them. If not, you're going to be canceled. And all of a sudden she's she, her again. And she seems to be dating guys again. So, so look, there's a lot of attention seeking going on. I would not have an issue with it if it's just about who you're sleeping with. I don't care. But what I do care about is when people use it to try and change society for the worse. And I think David Williams was very clearly jumping on a bandwagon quite quickly to deflect from the fact that he had criticism for playing a trans character in the past. Just go away. Boy George always used to dress up as a woman as well. Boy George is a gay man. You can be a gay man that puts on women's clothes. That's absolutely fine. Don't try and change the world because of your own proclivities. Certainly don't try and change scientific reality because of your proclivities. And I wouldn't talk about this 
if I didn't believe it was damaging. But I think what David Williams is doing is going down a very damaging path. If you're confused about your sexuality, just say it. But to try and claim all of these years on that you're non-binary, I think is ludicrous. I think it is completely ludicrous, Lee. But do you want the final word on that? Well, I was going to ask you, you, you said, you know, you can be a gay man and dress up in women's clothing. You can be a straight man and dress up in women's clothing. I, I can think of someone from your neck of the woods, not New Zealand, but Australia, who made a, a lifelong career <laughs> and a very successful one, the beloved late Dame Edna, who was used as a spokesman for major corporations in Australia, was beloved. And he never had a problem with any of this. Why do you think that is, Dan? Well, guess what? Dame Edna was anti-woke as well. Barry Humphreys didn't believe in the whole trans debate. So no, very, very good comparison. If only David Williams had the balls. The sad thing is, is I think David Williams is probably very anti-woke himself. Look at his comedy. There was nothing woke about Little Britain. But the problem is, if you want the money, you want the big bucks, you have to sell out, you have to buy into this ludicrousness. So bad news on that front, David Williams. Don't go down that path. Doesn't mean I don't think you're a decent guy in some ways and that you weren't sold out over the Britain's Got Talent stuff. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wooten Outspoken. Please click on my face just to the bottom left to subscribe to this brand new independent news source and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to our brand new live shows, uncancelled interviews and special royal episodes. Outspoken is also now available as a podcast, so you can listen to the show every weekday on the go, wherever you are.